So uh, he's going to give the presentation today. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, as the title tells you, I'll be talking about the participation, participatory gestalt framework, which is for analyzing participatory qualities for interaction in public spaces. And uh, this paper is uh, co-authored with two of my very good colleagues, just mentioned, Peter Dalsko and Ole Sarah Iversen. Uh, our research group has really a strong background, as just mentioned, in participatory design. And uh, within participatory design, participation is actually debated, but there seems to be a common agreement that there are a number of uh, basic qualities. Some of them are just mentioned here. Uh, people, context, methods, products, etc. But uh, motivating for this work has also been my observation that uh, participation seems to be ubiquitous. It's everywhere. We have participatory art, participatory culture, democracy, journalism, aesthetics, action research. I'm sure you can continue this long list of uh, other areas where participation is appearing. But uh, don't worry, guys. We are focusing on human-computer interaction today. Uh, but rather than investigating participatory design, I'll turn on to how we can maybe define participation in relations to people's interaction with installations. And uh, in particular, I will be focusing on uh, participation in public space. Uh, our research group for the last years has been involved in more than 10, 15 large-scale installations deployed in open space. So. Uh, uh, this is kind of our background, and they have been tested out there, and we started to wonder what is really the nature of this kind of interaction from a participation perspective. And uh, we were kind of searching for a way of organizing this knowledge, and uh, we got inspired by uh, the interaction gestalt concept proposed by Lim and Stalderman and co-authors. They argue that in interaction takes on a gestalt, a composition of qualities which forms a configuration which is actually greater than the sum of its parts. That's the core of uh, the Gestalt concept. So in this sense, uh, interaction can be characterized by a number of attributes like uh, connectivity, directness, pace, state. So along these lines, or inspired by this work, we ended up defining the participation Gestalt of a public interactive system as a unified perception and experience of participatory qualities as they unfold with a system in a given social cultural setting. So, uh, just a second. And uh, this participation gestalt is actually composed of five qualities, the ones you see here, expressivity, investment, exposure, sociality, and persistence. And uh, these qualities, they are not mutually exclusive they may influence its others and may unfold at the same time during interaction. Remember, we are talking about a gestalt. So in order to do this particular kind of analysis from this perspective, we are, have proposed a kind of visualization of how that indicates how participation is unfolding according to each of these five aspects, ranging from very low to high. Let us take a look at these uh, four qualities in turn. The first one, expressivity. We define expressivity as the way and the degree which people can co convey their thoughts or feelings through interacting with an installation. So a installation may provide a high degree of expressivity by offering multiple modes of different formats such as text, video, audio, speech, sign language as we just saw a moment ago, uh, as well as bodily interaction in various forms. In contrast, an installation may provide few and perhaps even unnuanced uh, means of expression, which will lead to a low degree of expressivity. We defined the next concept, uh, uh, which is investment, as the resources or the efforts that people commit in order to successfully engage in interaction. So an installation can buy a high degree of investment by requiring people to commit themselves both mentally and physically through action to the interaction in a period over time. At the one extreme, people may actually hardly notice that they are interacting or participating. For instance, when you are tracked by a camera by moving through an open space in an urban city. An example of low degree of investment is, for instance, this well-known bike counter 
where, which simply registers you as you are passing by on the bike lane and displays the number of cyclists who has passed by on that particular day or period. Exposure. We define exposure as the degree to, the degree to which participants can attract attention or are visible to other people during or after the interaction. So exposure is when you have lots displays highly visible leads to a high degree of exposure, which makes people very visible in the city. At the other end of ex the extreme, you may actually have the case that people are very little exposed, for instance, when they're interacting with their mobile phone and it's hardly recognizing who is actually participating. Sociality, perhaps the most obvious one, we define sociality as the opportunities for people to engage with other people when interacting with an installation. An example of low degree of sociality is actually this just mentioned bike counter. Another famous example of participation is the blink light installation that some of you might know. It's the kind of installation where you can control a paddle on a large size building and ping pong. It would be hard to imagine this as not a social kind of interaction. Uh, last of the five concepts is uh, persistence. We define persistence as the time span during which the outcome of an interaction are exposed and remain accessible to others. Some kinds of participation is actually instantaneous. Other kinds of uh, participation are kind of registered and saved and made avail available for other people beyond the single moment of interaction. So in this uh, paper, in our paper, in our work, we have applied this framework for the analysis of uh, four installations. And the first one of them, sorry, something. The, the first installation is the ruler table, which is a museum installation, which offers visitors the opportunity to decorate their own rune stone, telling a little story, and placing it in a digital landscape together with other rune stones created by other people. The Tokioki installation is a mobile talk show in some ways similar to the conventional television talk show where a host is having some visitors or some guests and, and a discussion and an interview or a conversation. But in contrast to the conventional talk show, the Tokioki is a uh, mobile event or a kind of pop-up event that happens at music festivals it could even happen at a conference like this one, at street parties or other kinds of outdoor events. And uh, you might also start to notice that this is actually some kind of participatory installations, but how are they actually different? How can you distinguish between the kinds of participation in these cases? And uh, this is actually the main motivation for, for our paper. But uh, let us introduce the third case, the climate confession booth. It was a year uh, installation or an intervention that wanted to put face on the discussions on the struggle for climate improvement and offered visitors a choice to have their voice heard throughout the city. The installation was actually in two parts. One part was in an exhibition area where there was a little, little booth where you could go in and record a short climate statement, basically committing your climate sins. I have taken too long showers or I drive to work rather than going by bicycle. Uh, these short videos were subsequently edited and as you can see to the right, distributed to bus shelters and uh, other kinds of displays throughout the city. Aarhus by Light, a uh, quite uh, different uh, urban installation. Uh, it was composed of a, it's a kind of media architecture installation and uh, in the building that you see on the left is our city music hall, more than 800 80 square meters of LED panels were integrated into the building and uh, in front of the building there is a little park and throughout this park there are some access uh, areas and in these areas we had three locations where people could interact with the installation. Basically people were recorded using a camera and on the facade they appear as a silhouette enabling to play with other or play with some small creatures inhabiting the facade. Let us look in, uh, in more detail into Old Spy Light. The, 
there was uh, definitely a high degree of exposure. I mean, the silhouettes, they appeared on this large-scale building, iconic building, easily viewable for many people passing around in this area. And since uh, the interaction took place in those dedicated interaction zones, it was quite easy to identify which shadow belongs to which people or which person. Uh, however, the fact that only silhouettes were displayed also limited exposure. Expressivity. The expressivity that unfolded was in general fairly low. You had this low resolution and actually quite limited means of expression. Basically, it was gestures and movements and waving with your hands or dancing around. A, mar a, mar a minority of users engaged in more expressive interactions, such as dancing and shadow boxing. Thank you. You know, participation is really two-way conversation, so <laughs> thank you. So uh, we just talked about expressivity. Uh, let's move on to, to investment. The investment uh, actually was little, it required little investment. I mean, basically some people, they were simply interacting by just passing by. They didn't have to do anything special and uh, they just appeared on that zone. So uh, some were actually unwittingly becoming part of it, but others invested themselves a little bit more. I think there'll be a little bit uh, of a video here. And this, uh, this, young, this young girl here, I mean, she, she's <laughs> investing her a little bit more than I did, just to let you know. Uh. <laughs> and uh, this installation actually clearly unfolded in a highly social manner, which you will also get to see here. A large amount of people who came here, they came on their own, but many came uh, together with friends and families, and perhaps someone started interaction and uh, other joined in, and even people who didn't know each other in advance, they also started to interacting together. So uh, let's move on to persistence, which is pretty brief because their uh, persistence here was extremely low. I mean, once people was interacting, basically they uh, did their little act and uh, was not available subsequently. So, uh, in summary, this is kind of a profile of the participation gestalt, and as you can see, expressivity and investment is actually fairly low. Uh, exposure is quite extreme, as you might have noticed. Sociality was certainly an element as well, and persistence was uh, actually quite low. So let us uh, rush on to some of the other cases. Uh, and uh, here you kind of see an overview of the other cases, and it's, it's clear that they each have a distinct profile. Uh, let us take a look at the, the Tokioki. The Tokioki actually had a very high expressivity and investment. I mean, people came, thank you, people came, uh, came and actually was entering in a, in a very serious dialogue and had some very good discussions. So quite different from uh, Aarhus by Light. Uh, and in some ways actually similar to, uh, in this respect, to the, uh, to the Rune Stone, people in some cases actually wrote quite personal messages to their former girlfriend or a person in their family they have lost. On the other hand, uh, persistent in this case was extremely low, was, uh, was fairly low, and sociality was uh, almost absent. Uh, so uh, I think in order of time here, I think I will move to some final cl closing observations here. Oops, what happened here? Just a second. Two minutes, this is perfect. So these, uh, we have a few final conclusions or observations here for the final discussion. Uh, you may remember that uh, this gestalt is actually a gestalt, so there are mutual elements that are actually playing together. And we encountered that several times during our analysis. For instance, the bodily interaction of Aarhus by Light is closely related to investment required when dancing, etc., and which in turn actually led to a high exposure. Uh, likewise, in the case of the Tokioki, the persistence was had a certain level, but that persistence was uh, also had an impact on the exposure because 
those conversations and interviews, they were video recorded and stored and made access on social media. Uh, one more important observation is that uh, the uh, and uh, those uh, schemas here or uh, diagrams are actually a little bit misleading because the Gestalt is actually a dynamic entity which is unfolding over time. So, for instance, uh, in the case of uh, Aarhus by Light, sociality may at a certain point be pretty low, but uh, suddenly when people start joining the one who is interacting at a certain moment, then the, the, the nature of the sociality is changing. Uh, likewise, if you look at the climate confession booth, uh, you also have quite a uh, limited exposure while you're recording your little video statement, but exposure becomes dramatically higher when you're displaying those videos out in urban space. Uh, similar is the case for the rule table. You are producing your little rune stone in private, limited exposure, but by placing it on the digital landscape, it becomes accessible and exposed to a much higher degree. <coughs> and uh, you, should, you might also have observed that we have had those many cases, but in this case, we have just uh, been made detailed analysis of four cases, and uh, we are kind of speculating that if you started doing more, a larger number of analysis of this kind, you might be able to identify certain patterns of, uh, inter of the interaction gestalt or the participation gestalt, and uh, we would actually like to invite you to try out this framework challenging it and uh, perhaps over time we can establish a larger pool of interaction uh, participation gestalts which may lead to the identification of uh, some certain patterns which might be a resource for, for design which is perhaps a later paper. So thank you everybody.